Hello and welcome back to a Small Turbo YouTube channel. Welcome sa ating week 5 ng self-learning home task. So, let me remind you, self-learning home tasks are personally made by teachers per school. So, these self-learning home tasks, um, though same thought, same discussion, but the activities are different so I hope you still listen here for the sake of this discussion anyway let's immediately start so our topic is all about asexual and sexual reproduction so this uh, falls under week 5 so our competency here is to differentiate asexual from sexual reproduction. So, reproduction is important for perpetuation or for the perpetuation of species. So, if there were no means of reproduction, individuals of a species would not exist anymore and their species would die. Through reproduction, new generations are produced. The species lives on. For people, it is important that certain species of plants and animals will not stop producing. So reproduction is a characteristic of all animals. It may occur several or many times in animals' lifetime. All living animals exist only because past generations have reproduced and the new individual have survived and reproduced too. In flowering plants, reproduction of individual organisms and the perpetuation of species are usually the function of flowers and fruits. Some plants, however, are more effectively propagated by means of their vegetative structures, which are the roots, stem, and leaves. This method of propagation does not involve meuses, nor fusion of gametes. So basically, there are two types of reproduction. Um, yes, reproduction. A sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So when you say a sexual reproduction, it is widespread among archaea bacteria, your bacteria, protist, fungi, and plants. It is also found among animals but seldom. On the other hand, for sexual reproduction, it is found among animals, plants, fungi, and protists. This is very common among animals, not common among protists, and generally not observed among bacteria. Reproduction guarantees the continued existence of every kind of or, or species. So let's start discussing asexual reproduction. So for asexual reproduction, it involves a single parent. So we say single parent, one parent. Okay? It does not require the union of two reproductive cells. So the offspring coming from a single parent are genetically identical with a parent. So, the first asexual reproduction is Okay, or the first method of asexual reproduction is what we call fission Okay, when you say fission It is a type of asexual reproduction that cell divides to form two identical daughter cells This is common among invertebrates and single cell or single-celled organisms. So, example, okay, Planaria 
and Yoclina. Let's have binary fission. So, under fission, we still have two types, binary and multiple fission. For binary fission, it is the splitting of cells into two. Alright, into two genetically related cells which are identical and of same size. When you say identical, kaparihong kapariho talaga sa nauna yung dalawang daughter cell. So, examples, amoeba, okay. So, the one we show here is the binary fission in amoeba. Then, we also have multiple fission type. So, it is the process of asexual uh, reproduction in which instead of two daughter cells, many daughter cells are produced from the parent cell. So, example, this one, sporozoans, left, and the one in, at the right, algae, or algae, which is which. So the second the second type of or the second method of a sexual reproduction is what we call this fragmentation. Okay? So in fragmentation a new organism grows from a fragment of the parent so it happens when a parent or organism or a parent organism breaks into fragments parts or pieces and each fragment develops into a new organism so the parent body divides into two or more fragments after some time each fragment develops into a new individual so example here is the planaria so, this is the parent planaria. Take note na put into pieces or the break into fragments siya or pieces or different parts. So, this is ang kanyang head. Okay, take note. Ang kanyang head ay nag-develop into a new individual planaria or new planaria. Ang kanyang itong part din na to. Uh, this is uh, the head. No? The head yung na-focus dito. So, nag-develop siya into a new planaria. So, planaria reproduce through fragmentation. The second type or the second method of asexual reproduction is regeneration. So, this is the type of asexual production where an organism replaces or replace or repair a lost damaged part of the body. So, example, here is the starfish. So, nakita niyo yung starfish. This is the parent starfish. And biglang na, na damage itong pati na to na starfish. What happened is, na regenerate siya. Okay, nag-regenerate siya. Okay. Yung arm na na-damage, eh, mawala na yun. So, itong parent starfish, nag-regenerate ang kanyang arm na na-lost o na-damage. This is now the and take na ko, itong fragment arm na nag-create pa pa siya ng, parang nag, ano pa siya, uh, it becomes a new starfish. Then we have body. The next method of asexual reproduction. In body, a bud or protrusion outgrows from the parent organism and detaches itself later to become a new individual. Okay? 
this is the example of body. Okay, this is hydra. So this is a plant. Another is no, hydra is animals. It's an animal. So sorry. So examples for plants. Exhibiting body are peach and katakataka plant. For animals, we have yeast and hydra this one. Well. So take note, tong parent hydra, biglang may, okay, bud na tumubo. So later on, yung bud ay magsisuperate and it will become a new hydra. Then we have the next method of a sexual reproduction is parthogenesis. So, this asexual reproduction requires an egg. So, the, the egg develops into a new organism without being fertilized. So, example here is the baby Komodo dragon. So, galing siya sa egg. Another examples are bees and aphids. Then, next is spore formation. So, this is a type of a sexual reproduction that parent plant produces hundreds of tiny spores which can grow into new plants. So, fungi such as bread mold mushroom reproduce through spores. When the spore case opens, the tiny spores are released and may be carried by the wind or water. So, that is our illustration under spore formation. When the spore case opens, the tiny spores are released and may be carried by the wind or water. Yes, that's it. So, once the spore lands on favorable environment, it develops into a new organism. So, example here is the species of bread mold and a common mushroom. So, another example could be ferns. Okay, are you familiar with ferns? Then moss. The next is vegetative propagation. So, in vegetative propagation, a new plant can form from the root, stem, or leaf of an already existing plant. So, we have first is rhizomes so they are modified stems or an underground stem that grows horizontally along the surface so shoots from buds at nodes of the stem develop into a new plant so examples this one bamboo and ginger plant another could be ferns also ferns are a rhizome next is runners so runners or stolons so they're just the same runners or stolons what is it all right runners or stolons so they're just the same again is an above ground stem that grows horizontally along the surface when the stem touches the ground Buds from the stem from roots and leaves and a new plant develops. So strawberry, silver wheat are examples here of runners or stolons. Another example is a spider plant. Next example or next type of vegetative propagation is bulb. So bulbs have a short underground stem and thick or Fleshy leaves that are colorless. So examples are here onion, shallots, the leaves. So a bulb can reproduce several, yes, several smaller bulbs, each of which can grow into a new plant. So these are examples of our bulbs. So we can also add daffodils here. Okay. Next is or next are tubers. So tubers are enlarged and thickened underground stem. 
So example, 